Hello, Reading. Welcome to our third annual series of Conversations with Candidates. I'm Linda Phillips, your host. We're welcoming Carla Nazaro today, a member of our community who's running for seat on the school committee. Thank you, Carla, for coming today. Thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation to be here, and we look forward to hear what you have to say. Um, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself to our community, and you can take it away. Sure, thank you, Linda. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Um, my name is Carla Nazaro. I have um, been in Reading for 15 years now. My husband, Mike, and I moved here when we were deciding what type of school system that we wanted to raise our family in. And we looked into the top 25 school districts in the state, and Reading fell within those parameters. Um, we have four children. We have two in college. We have one at, at the high school and one at Parker, a seventh grader at Parker. Our kids have done um, very well in, in Reading Public Schools. So you've told us about your family. How about your involvement in local activities? Sure, so I have, um, I'm very involved with my church. Um, I have 15 years experience as a Girl Scout troop leader. Um, I have been very involved with the school systems, and I am. Um, I have been on the town committee, town, town meeting, also. So you want to talk today specifically about school committee issues? Sure. And uh, one of my favorite topics. And you gave me your outline, and you said that you would like to discuss the responsibility of school committee members. So I'll give you an opportunity. I think there were four things you mentioned, and um, the first one you said was about budget. Sure, so the, the, um, the three primary responsibilities or tiers of responsibility for school committee members are um, budget, um, policy, and um, oversight of the superintendent and the district goals. In terms of the budget piece of it, um, we would, I would like more f efficient and effective budget, budgeting. Um, we have recently had an override, which is a big deal in this town, and we would like that money to last for as long as possible. We're two years into it, and we have been told that the budget or the override will last about three and a half to five years. So how do we most effectively um, spend and get what we need in our, in our school system? Um, Another thing facing our school district is the need for a full day free kindergarten or taxpayer funded kindergarten. And how do we make that reality happen um, while taking into consideration our senior population who is very concerned about their taxes um, and how do we make that happen without a tax increase? Um, and how do we help with full, the full day kindergarten experience as well? Um, Special education is another factor within the budget that we, the costs are always unexpected and can be very high at times, so we wanna be careful about that as well. So how do we control that? Um, and then we have the issue with space and what we're going to do um, with space issues that we're dealing with as well. Um, the second tier is policy, so the school committee will look at um, reviewing policy and adhering to policies, coming up with new policies. Our school district has been, since my children were little, um, my children have been through Joshua Eaton, from Parker, and to the high school. We have, um, the school district has always been very focused on children's social, emotional well-being and done a very good job with that. One of the policy issues that I will be focusing on more because it's very important to me and I think it's something that um, is facing our school district is the bullying and harassment policy. So I would, I have been looking at it and I would like the um, communication from that to be able to come up to the school committee as well. Um, we want a an environment in our school system that is conducive to education and a good environment for teachers and for students. Um, and then the, the last piece of it is the oversight of the superintendent and the district goals. 
So um, the school committee technically has one employee, which is the superintendent, and then obviously under that is the whole school district. So um, there's been a lot of talk of SMART goals, so some measurable and realistic goals, and um, that can e easily be measured. Um, and hopefully that will take the place of more soft goals and, and goals that are harder to um, establish and to measure against. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, in the oversight on the superintendent's performance, that would come in under that yes. with the district goals. It's not just for the district, but also from the top from the top down. Yes. Um, you mentioned already some of the issues you had that you want to talk about. The f <coughs> excuse me, the full day K. And you had um, some things uh, particular to the high school, so why don't you speak to those? Sure, so um, in terms of full day kindergarten, um, that is an issue that statewide many um, districts have already gone into full day kindergarten being provided by the town. Um, Reading currently the, the population in kindergarten, about 90% of our students in kindergarten right now, their parents have um, opted for full day kindergarten and they're paying tuition for that. That tuition that they're paying is one of the higher tuitions in the state. Um, that, so we as a community need to decide what are our priorities, what are our realities, how do we, how do we get that $1.2 million to establish full day kindergarten. Um, and, and figure out what our true costs for kindergarten are and how to actually um, f figure out how to implement that and whether it's a phased approach um, of, of lowering tuition as we kind of phase it in, but how do we come up with new revenue sources in, to, to make that happen. Um, that is part of it and then um, in a few months I will have my third child graduate from Reading High School, so I have a good um, understanding and background of my children going through all levels of the school system. I feel like I, I know the players at the high school, I, I know the process, I've gone through the, um, the college process and things like that. Right now we have a vision of the graduate, so there's a new committee with um, kind of Nick dictated from NEASC on that, so I am looking forward to learning more about that process and that committee and, and what their roles and responsibilities are. In terms of the high school, I and I have to say that my children have had a fabulous experience throughout all their levels of our school system. Some things that I would like to focus on is um, we've had in the past few years, we've had our track collapses at different levelings in our school system um, and they've collapsed those tracks. From what what was it before? It well, was we we have AP we have AP and we had honors and we had strong college prep and college prep, and um, we've gotten rid of the 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 college prep piece. So we have three levels now. Mm -hmm. I would like to. Um, we have to be mindful of our gifted students yes. and being able to give them opportunities, more opportunities for taking AP classes and AP tests. We have to um, be mindful of our students with special needs, right, mm -hmm. our more vulnerable population and servicing them properly and getting them what they need. Um, at all levels. At all Even levels. Even preschool, yeah. Yep, and we have to also be able to, you know, we have a, a, the majority of our kids are in the middle, so how do we, how do we ev elevate all of those levels, and how do we meet kids where they're at in all of those levels? Um, another thing that I would like to look into is um, offering more in terms of um, elective, elective courses, <laughs> yeah, more in yeah. elective courses um, offerings at at um, the high school level. I was at a um, a Girl Scout event this weekend and ended up talking to a lovely mother who lives in Reading who works in another school district and she teaches cooking at the high school level and nutrition. And practical I, and it was yeah. fabulous. Um, something that I took in middle school. Yeah, I um, did too. Only they called it junior high then. Right. Yeah. Um, another area that I would like to focus on is um, 
we are we've become such a global economy and how do we help our kids get um, better equipped when they when they go to, to college and 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 beyond um, with world languages and how it would be wonderful to have more offerings for languages in our school systems and even more in the middle school level. Um, so right now we're offering Spanish and French and Latin, so it would be a nice addition to be able to offer more classes, um, more classes as well. And, um, And I, w I think we were going to talk about special ed too. <laughs> yes, but um, let's see. So at the high school, you had the track collapse. Mm -hmm. You had the access to AP classes and the variety of elective offerings. Now the middle school, you just mentioned something before we went on air. Sure. Something that was, oh, you did mention the languages yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, that was there, <laughs> access to languages. Sure. And so then the... Um, the other side of the card reminds me about special ed, and I like the saying that you gave me, so I'll let you say it. So I, um, I, as a parent, I have been through the IEP process and the 504 process. Um, it was a very um, emotional process. It's when you feel like your child is in need of something. It's yes, a very I emotional. Know. Both of my children went, had IEPs. Right, and um, and I've always used the the saying that as a parent, you're only as happy as your least happy child, right? Um, and that process, I feel like we, um, it would be fabulous to have it be more of a collaborative process rather than combative process. Um, that population, we have a new student director of um, special ed, which I'm really excited about. They call it student services now, is that yes, what Yes, thank you. Um, so I, 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 I'd like to bring people to the table in all aspects, whether it's special ed or whether it's what's going on with um, space issues in Killam, to bring people to the table, to have more of a collaborative process to, um, I think that helps with transparency, that helps yeah. with communication. Yeah. Um, that That's kind of how I operate in my professional life and in my, my home life, so I, I would look forward to bringing that to the school yeah, committee. Yeah, the, the, when I ran for school committee, which isn't important, but w one of the biggest concerns that people always raised was um, services for sp their special ed children. Sure. Or that certain things in the IEPs were not being done or that the progress that the child was making was was not making um, in their minds the the adequate pro process progress in their academic level skills so it's always a challenge because there's new needs mm -hmm. that come up every year new children come in school sometimes in later grades you know difficulties learning issues become more apparent than in earlier grades so and, it affects a lot of, uh, although our numbers have stayed pretty solid right. for, you know, IEP children and out-of-district children, it's it's still a very important need that we have to fulfill for our needy children and uh, members of the community who need that service. Sure. And you had one thing on that we l looks like we have time to go into is the um, school project that was brought up at town meeting sure. and uh, maybe you'd just like to say a few things about about that because sure. um, I think we have the same interest in, in um, going through some of that information and perhaps we'll get to do another show just on the proposal that was created by an architectural firm that the, that the town hired and I know you've, you at town meeting you heard it and I'm sure you're paying very close attention so why don't you just tell us a little bit about Sure. what you saw and what you think is coming down the road. Sure, so we're, we're one of the issues that we're facing in our district is um, space concerns. Um, the space concerns that we have is not due to our population increasing because our population of children is actually decreasing. So yeah, um, 100, oh, excuse me, 173 this year from last year down 173 that's quite sure. a number so so our, our space issues are coming from a, a couple of avenues that I see of we're offering full-day kindergarten right so before if we were offering more 
half day classrooms. Now we're offering more full day, so that's taking up space. And then our special ed um, requirements and mandates are taking up space as well. We should we should just explain that in special ed classes it has a reduced number of students in each class, right. which is what creates a space. Sure. It's like a limit of six or eight, depending on the age. Am sure. I correct? Some, something like that. Sure. So we. Um, so the superintendent and the school committee has asked for a study to be done for space issues. Um, they have um, hired a, a, a company with the name of GNAP, um, and they have done a space issue for the, the town that has been presented, and they've come up with different schemes, schemes A through H, which um, will help us work through our space issues for the next 20 years. Um, they've made certain assumptions with this study that um, our preschool population that's currently housed in our high school, that it would be better for that to not be housed in the high school, to be housed in a, um, an elementary school. One of the assumptions they made was that out of our five elementary schools now that none of them could handle having a second floor put on. Um, and so they've come up with all these different schemes with these different assumptions. Um, I've taken a look at them. Um, GNAP actually took out a couple of the assumptions, a couple of the schemes as not really plausible. Yes, yes, and right, and then there were, um, I have taken out three of the schemes that didn't w weren't able to accommodate moving preschool into the um, the elementary level. Another one of the assumptions that was made was to that it would be better to keep the fifth graders housed in elementary schools rather than bring them up into middle schools. Um, and that left with that left us with after taking out those. Um, three schemes that didn't bring preschool into the elementary school level that um, three schemes left. Um, there were three different options. I, I looked at one of our, our least expensive options out of those three. That was around a little over $85 million. Um, I am concerned about um, about the cost of it, right? That scheme would be to tear down Killam, right? We know that Killam is an older building, still in great shape, um, but does have some issues. So the tear down of Killam and building a two-story Killam, and then to have a 10,000 square foot addition put on Birch Meadow. Um, and they also did a study on um, what the populate what would happen to populations at, at different schools yeah, and how to accommodate and everything, yeah. right and busing issues and things like that. So I feel like there's there's got to be some collaboration done mm -hmm. at that point to determine we need to hear from all stakeholders, right? We need yeah. to hear from taxpayers. We need to hear from older folks who may not have children in the schools anymore. We need to hear from from younger folks with with families in the system. Um, we need to hear from the Finance Committee and the, the Select Board and stuff. So um, I, I will add that part of my professional background um, where I feel like I would be effective as a school committee member was that I, for six years, worked on, I worked for the construction contractor or the construction consulting firm on the Central Artery Tunnel oh Project. Um, I ran project teams which put construction, multi-million dollar construction contracts through the bidding process, through the award process, and then issued notice to proceed. Um, the company that I worked for was the largest construction, privately owned construction company in the world. Um, so I know that my construction management experience in the public sector would allow me to be a, a good liaison between the school committee and the permanent building committee. Mm -hmm. um, currently I work, as an aside, I, I, I work in the health and fitness arena where um, 
I send physical therapists into people's homes to exercise with them. So um, I You mean I could have done that when I broke my leg? I had Absolutely. to go to physical therapy <laughs> hobbling along. <laughs> Absolutely. And I always felt worse when I left than when I got there. <laughs> we'll it, talk later. It made, it made good use all around after. <laughs> so um, just in terms of that, I feel like my, my skill set at this point in time with the needs on the school committee would, would be beneficial. Well, we're coming to our um, our close here, so I'd just like to give you an opportunity to have a little closing statement or say if you think we missed anything or something you'd like sure. to add. Sure. I'll give you the floor and you can uh, speak to our community out there and let them know. Sure. Hi. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for wanting to learn a little bit more about the candidates. Um, I appreciate it. I am a hard worker. I am a collaborator. I love living in this town. I, I feel like I, my skill set could help make a difference. I will do my best to earn your vote, and I would appreciate your vote. Um, thank you. Well, that brings this session of Conversation with Candidates to a close, but there'll be more, so stay tuned, and we'll be posting these on, uh, for YouTube and also on the RCTV website, and we'd like to thank them. And thank you again, Carla. It was great to meet you for the second time, and it's clear you have a lot to say and a lot to offer, and I, and I wish you good luck in your endeavor. Thank so you. for Hello Reading, we'll say goodbye. Until the next time. <laughs>